Hey guys, welcome back. First off, this is not a sponsored review. I bought all of these products with my own cash money. So hopefully that buys me some shred of credibility. And second of all, this is a collaboration. I've invited a few other Panther car owners to uh, purchase one of these battery testers, try it out, and make a video review about it. So I recommend you stop watching this video and I've put the links to their videos down below in the description uh, because I have a feeling it's going to be a lot more interesting than this one. So uh, today I want to talk about this uh, Harbor Freight battery load tester. Uh, let me give you a shot of the box. And I bought this on July 31st. So I've had it for about a month and I paid uh, $19.99 and let me show you the tester this is it here and here's the back of it so before I get into the review of the tester I want to tell you why I uh, purchased this and why you'd want to spend your money on one of these and uh, spoiler alert uh, for $20, I really think these things are worth every penny. So uh, I've got this battery here, my Costco uh, battery. I bought this for my 2010 Mercury Grand Marquis three years ago. And let me give you a shot of that. So I bought this uh, almost three years ago and I'm coming up on my 42 month free replacement period. So that means I've only got about six months left uh, before I can turn this in and get a full cash refund or a new battery uh, without paying uh, any type of proration whatsoever. So I was real curious on the state of health of this battery if it's going to make it through the warranty period and even make it as even live as long as the one that replaced it because uh, the battery that was in that car before this one was the original Ford Motorcraft and uh, it was a 2010 and I replaced it in uh, 18 so it was eight or nine years old and the reason why I replaced it was simply due to age I really didn't trust a nine-year-old battery and I didn't want to be left stranded somewhere. So even though I wasn't having any uh, starting issues or cranking issues, I just decided to uh, preemptively uh, replace it. So um, because that battery was good, I, uh, I did a little experiment and uh, I, fully, I charged it up fully with my uh, battery charger over here. I put it on a 12 hour charger, a 12 hour charge. And then I took it down to these retailers downtown that sell batteries. Uh, and I wanted to get it tested to see how much life was left in it. And I took it to my Ford dealer. I took it to AutoZone. I took it to uh, O'Reilly, Napa, a local mechanic. And then lastly, I went to Walmart. So I, took, I had it tested six different times at six different retailers. And the results I got were pretty interesting. Uh, three out of the six times they said it was good and then three out of the six times they said it was bad and I thought that was real interesting how uh, these new electronic uh, battery testers have a 50% uh, accuracy rate based on that situation alone so um, this uh, helped me uh, make this purchase so I got online and I had to make a choice. Do I want to buy one of these old school analog battery testers or do I want to spend my money on one of the new uh, electronic testers? So I went with the old school uh, testers just like this. And the reason why is because this is what I grew up uh, using. This is called the VAT40 or I like to call it the, the Voltage Amperage Tester Model 40. And uh, if you know what this is, uh, this pretty much was the industry standard for uh, the 80s and 90s and uh, maybe even the early 2000s. And uh, this is the gold standard, in my opinion, for testing batteries and starters and whatnot. But of course, uh, technology came in and it was replaced with something like this. And uh, this is the Medtronics EXP800. And this was a, 
uh, technological revolution. It's all electronic, it's handheld. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you don't have to push it around on this cart and it'll tip over it on the slightest bump. And the biggest thing is it's even got a printer that will print thermal receipts and it'll tell you the cranking, uh, how many uh, amps it's got left in it, it'll date it and uh, give you a little health report. So uh, that's uh, where we're, that's where we're at now. And these electronic testers, when they came out, you know, these are multi-thousand dollar tools and the only people who could afford them is uh, repair shops. But now if you get on Amazon, you can find one for $40. And uh, based on my research, I've found that in order to get a good quality one, you need to spend a little bit more money. So uh, that's why I went with uh, this uh, analog one because um, for my application, I think uh, this is going to work a little bit better for me. So uh, let's get into my. Uh, so yeah, let me. Sh I want to show you how this thing works, and then I'll give you some pros and cons on it. So, um, like I said, this is a, a three-year-old battery. This is out of my Grand Marquis, and uh, I just fully charged it. I put a put it on a 12-hour uh, charge with my charger. And so this is going to be our good, our known good battery. And then I've got a, a, a failing battery right here that has a malfunction. And this is going to uh, duplicate a, a bad test. So... Let's see if I can do this. So uh, before you use this thing, uh, it only you're only going to get accurate results if you do a fully if you fully charge the battery. If the battery is not fully charged, you're not going to get an accurate result with this. So make sure uh, the battery is fully charged. So uh, right now we can already see we're getting a voltage reading of it looks like 12 12.5 volts. And this is the little activator switch. Maybe I should click it beforehand. This is the little switch that is going to turn it on. And when I turn it on, it this, this needle is going to move. And so what I'd like you to pay attention to is what this needle does uh, when I uh, hold down this button. And the instruction manual says to do this for 10 seconds, but I found that you can get an accurate reading with only 5 seconds. Okay, so here we go. So this is going to be our good battery. All right, here we go. Okay, so I wasn't quite sure because my eyeball is not lined up, but it looks like it's testing at 800 cold cranking apps right there in the green. So I'm uh, I'm very satisfied with that result because the uh, the rating of this battery the uh, where's it at oh right there the the cold cranking amp rating of this battery is 850 so if this thing says 800 that means I'm only down 50 cranking amps um, so I'm I'm very happy with that now let's test. Let's test this bad battery. And uh, this battery, this battery is a much smaller battery. So it's only uh, rated at 525 cranking amps. And uh, I, I hang this thing up because uh, you can see these vents on here. It gets really hot. So be mindful of that. And just to uh, reiter reiterate, uh, this battery was fully charged for 12 hours with my charger. So this is a uh, right off the charger a few minutes ago. Okay, so already we can see a problem. Uh, already we can see a problem. It's only got 10.5 volts. So now watch what happens when I push this, uh, when I turn this on. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, it's already falling into the 8 volt. Okay, so there you go. So it started at a uh, ten and a half volts and then went down to eight volts. So that is what a uh, bad uh, a bad battery test will look like with that tester. Okay, so uh, let's uh, finish this up with some pros and cons. So as far as pros, I got to say it's the it's the price. These things are cheap at twenty dollars. Uh, you really can't beat that. Uh, number two, I'm going to say these things have accurate test readings and they have reliable and repeatable test readings. And my last pro is it's analog. You know, it's, uh, it's anti-digital. It's, it's the old school way. Now I do have uh, two cons on this and the first con is that the only way this thing is going to work and provide accurate results is if you fully charge the battery. So if you don't have a battery charger, you're not going to be able to use this. You really do need to get a battery charger and fully charge the battery before you test it with a load tester. So if you don't have a, a battery charger, uh, this is not going to work for you. I would recommend or you would probably want to look at getting an electronic tester because, you, because those can test batteries um, that are not fully charged and they'll give you somewhat accurate results. And uh, the last con is this takes a little bit of skill using it. Uh, you really need to uh, watch and interpret that needle movement and you really have to pay attention uh, to what you're doing when you're using it. And uh, the more you use it and the more batteries you'll test, uh, you will gain experience and you will learn how to interpret uh, these needle readings. And you can, if you uh, were watching the, the needle readings on this, when I hit the button, uh, they came back kind of slow and then they popped back up and when you get a really bad battery you'll know because that needle will immediately fall uh, to the zero reading okay uh, that's pretty much it um, thanks for watching we'll see you next time bye bye